Home in the Cave. This book is a fictional book because the bats talk and the bats do things that only people can really do. But the book talks about what real bats do. Before we read Home in the Cave, I want to share some words with you that you'll hear in this story. One thing you'll hear about in this story are mammals. Mammals are any animal that have hair and drink milk from their mother. Bats, even though they fly and have wings, are mammals. Another word you'll hear in this story is nursery. <clears throat> it is the kind of place where a baby sleeps, but this is a nursery full of baby bats, where the bats Mothers and babies alike hang together on the ceiling of a cave. You'll hear about stalactites in this book. Stalactites are a rock formation that forms in caves and hangs down from the ceiling of the cave. It's water and minerals that drip from the cave ceiling and dry into rocks before they hit the ground. You'll hear about mayflies in this book. Mayflies are a small insect that is a main food source for some bats. You'll hear about guano in this book. Guano is bat poop. Bat poop can be used for lots of things by lots of different animals. You'll hear about salamanders. Salamanders can be found in lots of places where there's water. Salamanders are an amphibian. In this book, you'll hear about cave salamanders. They don't even have eyes, and they live in the bottom of caves. Some more words you'll hear in this book are pup. A pup is a baby bat. Bat babies can be very small as small as the tip of your finger. This is a bat pup. You'll hear about bats that hunt. They don't hunt for people. They hunt for small insects like grasshoppers and mayflies. You can see this bat has caught a grasshopper in its hunt to eat for dinner. You'll hear about stalagmites. Stalagmites are rock formations that grow up from the floor of the cave up. You'll hear about sonar. This is what bats use to make a high pitched sound that we can't even hear. The waves bounce off the insects that they're trying to hunt and bounce back so that they can know where their food is located. You'll hear about a Phoebe. A Phoebe is a kind of bird that can build its nest near the entrance of a cave. And you'll hear the word scurried. Scurried means to move along very quickly. I hope you enjoy reading about the true facts about bats in this fictional book, Home in the Cave by Janet Halfman, illustrated by Shannon Bersani. Here on the front cover, you can see the bat pup, a salamander, and a mouse. Let's read Home in, a, in the Cave. This is the title page of the book. Home in the Cave by Janet Halfman, illustrated by Shannon Bersani. Here you can see a crayfish that lives in a cave, a salamander that lives in a cave, and we'll learn about many other things that live in caves. On a ceiling deep within a cave, baby bat held tight to his mom. Thousands of other moms and babies crowded close, looking like a furry blanket. In the blackness, baby bat filled his tummy with warm milk. That's because he's a mammal, so he drinks milk from his mother. He heard squeaking and chirping all around him. The pup felt warm, cozy, and at home in the bat nursery. I 
love this cave, he thought. I never want to leave it. Never. See all the little bats squished together in their bat nursery? Soon it was dusk. That's the time of day when it starts to turn dark. And time for the mother bats to leave the cave to hunt insects. Remember, practice flapping your wings, said mom. You're almost old enough to hunt with me. Then she was off. In a roar of thousands of flapping wings, the bats zoomed around stalactites hanging from the ceiling like icicles. They soared past stalagmites, poking up from the floor like sandcastles. Baby Bat didn't like his mom to go away, and he didn't want to practice flapping his wings. He figured that if he didn't learn to fly, he'd never have to leave the cave. See all the baby bats once their mothers have gone on hunting trips. To make the night go faster, the little bats told stories. Last night, my mom caught a gazillion mayflies. My mom ate a moth bigger than this room. My mom almost got snatched by an owl. That's nothing. My mom flew right between a fox's sharp teeth. These things can happen to bats, but I think these baby bats might just be making these stories up. Owls, foxes with sharp teeth. Now baby bat was even more certain that he never wanted to leave the cave. He hid under his own wing, wishing his mom would come home soon. See him there hiding under his own wing? I don't think he likes their stories. He heard flapping wings and stuck out his head. <clears throat> but instead of his mom, he found the little bats exercising their wings. That's what his mom told him to do, was exercise his wings. Baby Bat knew that his mom would ask if he had practiced, so he flapped his wings very slowly. His mind was still on owls and foxes, and without realizing it, his toes let go of the ceiling. He was flying. He tried to use his sonar to tell him where he was going, but FUD! He crashed into a wall. Down he fell, smack into a messy nest on a ledge. Who do you think lives in this messy nest on the ledge? When he opened his eyes, a whiskery face touched his own. Hi there, I'm Plurbus Packrat, said the whiskery face. Are you okay? I think so, said Baby Bat. But why is your nest so lumpy? Oh! That's just the shiny trinkets I've collected. These coins say E Pluribus Unum. That's where I got my name. Hey, I was just about to go exploring. Want to come along? We can use my flashlight and follow the scent trails I've made from room to room. Look at all the trinkets and good little things that Pluribus the pack rat has collected. You think Baby Bat will go with Pluribus? Near the entrance, the pair 
woke a Phoebe nesting on a ledge. Do you remember what a Phoebe is? It's a kind of bird that lives near the entrance of a cave. In the leaves below, Pluribus almost stepped on a rattlesnake. Its rattle echoed through the cave. Rattle, rattle. A little further inside, bright orange cave salamanders darted across damp walls. Plop! A cave cricket jumped onto Pluribus. Its extra long feelers waved about. Pluribus shook the cricket off and it scurried away. Deep in the cave, the pair visited Baby Bat's nursery. Pluribus jumped onto a ledge just above a huge pile of bat droppings called guano, covering the floor. I know you love this room, said Pluribus, but thousands of other animals love it too, and they love it because of you and the rest of the bats. Because of me? asked Baby Bat. Bats are very important to caves, explained Pluribus. All the food in the cave comes from outside, and bats bring in most of it. They fly out to catch insects and then turn them into droppings for other cave critters to eat. Down at the bottom, you can see some of the cave critters that eat the guano or bat poop. The smelly guano swarmed with thousands of critters. Springtails, mites, beetles, flies, crickets, millipedes, centipedes, daddy longlegs, spiders, and more. Many snacked on the bacteria and fungi growing on the guano. Others snacked on the guano itself. And still others ate the snackers. Why are many of the critters white? asked Baby Bat. They're white because they never leave the cave, said Pluribus. Many are blind, too. Here in the dark, they don't need colors to hide from other animals or eyes to see. Can you see all the centipedes, millipedes, mites, beetles, and other animals that Pluribus mentioned are snacking on bat guano? Who knew so many life forms existed on the floor of a cave eating bat poop? A nearby stream held more ghostly creatures. Pluribus rippled the cold water with his paw. A cave fish swam over expecting to find a water critter to eat. At the stream's bottom, the flashlight lit up a cave crayfish waving long antenna and a blind salamander resting on a rock. See the blind salamander over here? And the cave fish and a crayfish. Do the water critters get food from bats too? asked the pup. They sure do, said Pluribus. Rain seeps into the cave and washes the guano into the stream. The guano feeds the f tiniest animals and they become food for the larger critters. Wow, I had no idea that so many animals depended on us for food exclaimed Baby Bat. Speaking of food, said Pluribus, I haven't eaten yet tonight. Like you bats, I leave the cave to find food, but I eat berries, nuts, and seeds. Pluribus took Baby Bat back to the nursery. The two hugged goodbye and promised to explore together again. Then Pluribus was off to fill his stomach and perhaps find another shiny treasure. 
As Baby Bat settled into his usual spot, he thought about all the cave critters that depended on bats. He started flapping his wings faster and faster. Maybe I could go hunting with Mom, he thought. She'd be there to protect me. It's not like I have to leave the cave forever. Can you see all the animals that depend on the bats for food? The millipedes and beetles and centipedes and spiders, cave fish, crayfish, even salamanders. Mom soon returned and Baby Bat snuggled with her drinking warm milk. For the first time, he realized that his mom needed to eat insects to make milk for him. He said, Mom, I practiced flapping my wings tonight. And you know what? I think I'm ready to go hunting with you. His mom hugged him tight. Her baby bat was growing up. And then the back of the book shows us all these different things that we saw in the cave. The cave cricket, a bird called a Phoebe, the blind salamander, cave fish, cave salamander, and even some plants. I hope you enjoyed learning about baby bat and all the things that happen when you are at home in the cave. Come back to listen again.